John Skipper and I had to come in rushing a couple of days <laughs> late because Metal Arc Media wants to immediately begin its 20-part documentary on Bishop Sycamore. Everyone's spending their vacation in studio. Dan, Roy, Chris, I mean, this is exciting. <laughs> we had to come in here in a hurry to just talk about, again, late to talk about this Bishop Sycamore story with a, our resident ESPN expert, John Skipper, and I think we all have the same question, right? How the hell does that happen? Yeah. How is it possible that a bunch of imposters, I don't know what the funniest part of that story is. I don't know if 58 nothing is the funniest part of that story or sharing helmets on the sideline or coach with an arrest record. That right there, yes. Just, no, he has a warrant out for his arrest. Oh, oh, yes, forgive me, forgive me. We'll have to shore up those details when we make it the 20-part Metal Lark Media documentary. How does this happen, John? Um, actually, I think this happens just because of the volume of games that they put on at ESPN. There's a hierarchy of what people pay attention to. This game falls pretty far down in the hierarchy, falls far enough down that they let someone else do the game and produce the game for them and give it to them. And somebody didn't pay attention, but I, I think it, since nobody got hurt, it's just funny. I don't think this is a reflection on the culture or that they don't care or that they're not paying attention. They are. This is just like it's a kind of a ridiculous analogy, but this is like expecting the Walmart CEO to know that some dog is shit in the aisle 13 of the <laughs> of the Fayetteville, Arkansas store. It's just like you can't know everything. There's no way to know everything. Yeah, people expect the people at ESPN to know everything that's going to air on their network. They do expect that, right? They do. Yes. And look, ESPN gets held to a very high standard because they're the worldwide leader and they they made some they, you know, this is it's it's, it's embarrassing. But it doesn't mean anything. Just inventory. It's just it's the just sheer inventory. volume. How much How much programming are they putting out all the time? Uh, they're putting out close to 100,000 live hours, probably more than 100,000 live hours at this point. So you think about that. There's 8,760 hours in a year. So they're doing 10, 11, 12 hours an hour. And <laughs> it is impossible <laughs> for anybody to pay attention to everything. They relied upon a partner to do this. And the partner got hoodwinked. I think mostly we should concentrate on just the fun of this. It's just <laughs> crazy. Thank goodness nobody got hurt. Right. Now, by the way, the guy who has an outstanding warrant probably should have thought about being on national television uh, <laughs> with a fake team. Uh, I think when you have a warrant out for you, you're not really thinking about stuff like that. John. <laughs> you're not thinking about that? I think you are thinking about no, exactly no, 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 that if no, you're no. any kind of smart future. I'd like to avoid TV cameras if I could. <laughs> no, for me, I think he could have been on national television. It's the claiming that you have several Division One recruits. Because then you're drawing attention to the lie. If a team gets hammered by IMG Academy, 58 nothing or whatever it was, that's one thing. But it's saying, hey, we have all these recruits. But do they get the game without the recruits? That's Maybe. how you get on ESPN well, one by of having the stories, high recruits. One of the stories said that they're having difficulty finding an opponent for IMG Academy. Because it's essentially a pro football academy. It's a, an unfair fight against most teams. And so it's only in kind of saying, hey, we've got all these great players. And then they look into it. No, you don't. Who are these great players you speak they of? They were playing their second game in three days on top of that. They had Juco players on the roster. Yeah. That's <laughs> unbelievable. I, they would have lost if they'd had Cam Newton on their roster. Yeah, but I don't think they lost by 58-0. <laughs> I, I think 58-7, 58-14. Cam Newton makes it a game for yeah. me. Yes. Three scores. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. That <laughs> Levitard show. Does Cam Newton make Bishop Sycamore a game? Put, they need, like, one offensive lineman, though. Did you, that quarterback was getting hit <laughs> quick every play <laughs> but jock so you can see can you explain to the audience what paragon sports is it's, it's a third party company that is airing games on behalf of espn is it their partners they're, right they're, yes they're packaging high school football games putting the matchups together doing the production and just feeding it into bristol that's all they're doing i think generally they've done good reliable games right uh in this case they got hoodwinked but who should vet that? Like, who should be the ones vet? Should it be ESPN? Should it be Paragon? Or you just, you see how ESPN could just trust Paragon because they've handed them 60 good games in the past. Yes. And somebody has, as their ninth responsibility, right, to supervise Paragon. 
and they're busy worrying about other things. Paragon hasn't messed up. If you call Amazon to deliver groceries and they deliver it well 60 times, and the next time, you know, they bring you all the wrong groceries, somebody just messed up. Uh, if you're the president of ESPN at the time and it happens, do you yell at somebody at Paragon? <laughs> do you fire somebody at Paragon? Do you stop working with Paragon? I don't think you stop working with them, but I think you tell them if it ever happens again. <laughs> if it ever happens again. That was essentially ESPN statement. <laughs> and by the way, and by the way, if if somebody calls you and tells you they have a high school football team called Cardinal Maple, don't take it. It's so strange. What it. kind of name is that? Religious tree. <laughs> What kind of name is that? Where, where does this rank, John? Where does this rank with all-time sports scams? Uh, well, it's a pretty good one. It is. Except it's a non-prominent sport. I, I think maybe the top of the food chain in scams is Rosie Ruiz briefly winning the Boston Marathon by proving that subways <laughs> are it's faster fly, I mean. than the fastest <laughs> marathon runner, right? And uh, I applauded that. She, she comes out of a subway stop, runs across the finish line. Actually, briefly, I think, and I don't remember this dramatically, but I think briefly wears the laurel wreath that you get for winning the Boston Marathon. What's wrong with that? And somebody <laughs> asked her, by the way, the, Somebody does ask her about her interval times, and she says, what are, those? What, what are, what are interval times? <laughs> Which I think was the beginning of the end of her scam. I think when they realized that she didn't know what an interval time was, she was on the way to being stripped of her title. I think it was photographed on the subway, or certainly seen on the subway, wearing her marathon, yes. whatever that is, the number. Yes. Guillermo, put it on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show. Does Stugatz applaud and endorse every kind of scam? <laughs> Any others? Because I'd put this in the pantheon of any all time, even though it ri I risk being prisoner of the moment just because the details are so good. Well, well, I'll date myself because I think the other one that this called to mind, which was so much fun and so interesting, was April 1st, and we should remember that date, April 1st, 1985. The weekly issue of Sports Illustrated came out, featured a story by George Plimpton, about a phenomenal pitcher whose name was Siddhartha Finch, Sid Finch for short, who uh, was a Buddhist monk who only wore one shoe and who threw 168 mile, <laughs> 168 mile an hour softball. They published it in the magazine, and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people believed it. It was a low point. It was a moment of greatest hope in the history of the New York Mets franchise, I believe. <laughs> and credit to the New York Mets because they went along with it. Of course. But lots and lots of people believed it. Those are great scams. They're scandals. Those aren't scandals. These are scams. This is just con artists at work. <laughs> and uh, who is the, who's, the, who's the guy with the arrest warrant, by the way? Do we know his name? The head coach of uh, Bishop Sycamore that isn't <laughs> a real team. I think it's the, the Reverend... The Reverend Master Bates. <laughs> wow. Wow. Dangerous, wow. dangerous joke. Hockey Nick's lab. Where did you get that information from? Barry McCockiner? The first, the first Hockey Nick's lab for John Skipper there. Congratulations. Congratulations. Big day for you, yes, John. Yes. A very, very celebratory day. Anything else about this subject that I know you guys have covered it. You can't cover it enough, honestly. I want, I want more of this story at every turn. I was hounding Jessica from vacation, telling her, please get on as many reporters as you can. Get on as many guests from the team as you can. You went into news gathering mode. Uh, I, I wanted, I wanted to send everyone at Metal Ark Media toward this story because of how wonderful it is. Oh, well, that's appropriate since nobody got hurt. You did notice that the the two fellows calling the game did begin to get worried about yes somebody getting hurt, and everybody's talking about oh these guys were men playing against boys. They were. But everybody's wrong. The men were on the IMG. <laughs> that's, that's, that's How is that possible? I don't know. How is that possible that you've got former JUCO players swapping helmets on the sidelines, which is disgusting, and they're 
physically not the size of all of these prospects. Uh, they're, they're the actual grown men, and they're getting trampled by the alleged kids. <laughs> I mean, they're grown men. No one said they were football players. <laughs> Un understood, but you would think at least, right? Would you not think? Fair enough. I, but I would think that at least somewhere someone would score a point that some adult some adult just because you're bigger who, than who everyone else decided to be a part of this some man on the losing team would would do something well against the kids uh, i don't know you have one two three four five six seven eight grown men here so we could fill the basketball team uh with three subs uh, do you think we'd score a point oh, if yeah. we played? Yeah. Uh, I'd have, I would have 20. Stugatz yeah. would rain down threes. <laughs> now you're thinking right. We need to infiltrate ESPN. Let's go. I've got a team yes. for you with first division mm -hmm. prospects, right? I got Roy. Roy, first division prospect. Stugatz. Point guard extraordinaire. You Thank remind you. me of Ernie Di Gregorio. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not scoring. If we're playing. Not uh, a, we're not getting the ball over half court. Wait, no. we're playing the IMG Academy. So we're I playing their varsity basketball team. If we played the IMG Academy varsity basketball team, we would not score a point. When I said 20, I was talking about an NBA team. <laughs> yeah, still got, still got <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you were. <laughs> I know you were. But but we're not scoring a point. You think yeah. we'd score but, a point? No. Oh, really? we'd post you up, Skip. We would. We'd post you no. up. You get a point. No. 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 Just set a screen for me. I get a little three-point shot. Let's go. Let's do this. I got you. I get that. I mean, Dan, you. does it luck into a, an offensive rebound and put it back in? I mean. <laughs> I, I, I one time played against an NBA player. I played against Walter Davis when I was at Carolina. Skipper was a very good basketball player. Skipper and used a, to used to play at like 5 a.m. these YMCA games. He'd come into a come into a city uh, between billion dollar deals and then start running on a court at 5 a.m. with the with the crazy people who would play pick up basketball at 5 a.m. We got five points then. Just throw it down low to skip. Right. No, no I played, and so I'm in Woolen Gym in the University of North Carolina. Uh, you stay on the court if you win. We won two or three games. I noticed the next team coming on the court featured Walter Davis, who's a fabulous player, played uh, 14 years in the league, scored 15,000 points. Uh, and I say, I'm foolish enough to say, I got him. Oh, God. Because I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm going to play against Walter Davis. They beat us. He heard me. And they beat us 7-0. Oh, no. <laughs> and he scored seven times. <laughs> you got him, all right. <laughs> so uh, so I did I did have the Bishop Sycamore experience, right? I had I lost 7-0. If we were playing a 58, I would have lost 58-0. What a terrible judgment from the man running our company to say, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> to Walter. His <laughs> numbers, he could hear it. <laughs> His numbers retired by the sun. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. think North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, and North Carolina. So it's not something he'll remember, but I've always remembered it, and it reminds me of most, about half of the adult male population in the United States is deluded as to how good they are. <laughs> I can't tell you how often I hear, oh, I, I, was, I signed a minor league contract, but then I blew out my knee. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> and I was just this far from playing for the University of North Carolina. <laughs> they are really that much better and those kids from the img academy some of those kids are going to play in the nfl they're all going to play in the sec and the acc and the big 10 and it, they're not close right i'm assuming that they took it easy on them near the end of the game i don't know that has anybody watched it <laughs> it was see? 30 to nothing with seven minutes to play in the second quarter they took it easy <laughs> okay so there is a enormous <laughs> talent gap between the guys who think they could play and the guys who can play. They took their foot off the gas, really? Of Wait. course they did. It could have been 100. <laughs> Skipper has to go now because he has to get into negotiations and create all of the people that we need to hire for this 20-part documentary on this scam. <laughs> He's got to get this out as Metal Lark Media's first giant project. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do the 10-hour special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you for it's not uh, enough time to be honest. Thank you for allowing us the floor, Stugatz. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming yes. back from vacation. <laughs> Parachuting in. <laughs> How do you guys know you're on vacation <laughs> or not? Unlimited vacation days. Okay. Why do we have you here? Is that true? Do we have unlimited vacation? How does this work? John? Yeah, you have unlimited vacation <laughs> days that you can't take. <laughs> All right. All right.